Liverpool have won the greatest prize in European club football. Jurgen Klopp has taken Liverpool back to the top of the mountain. It's a magical night in Madrid for Liverpool. When it came to money, Jurgen Klopp said goodbye and went for a walk in the nearby Central Park. Meanwhile, in the office of a law firm on New York's Lexington Avenue, his agent negotiated his new contract. On that 1st October in 2015, the German coach became the head of one of the most famous football clubs in the world, Liverpool FC. Annual salary, at that time around 11 million euros. Klopp had passed the CEO test. Michael Gordon, president of the Fenway Sports Group, US owner of the Liverpool FC, had screened the candidate according to all rules of investment arithmetic. How many points per game does he manage? How many goals do his team score on average? How do his results on the pitch relate to the financial possibilities of his employer? The figures spoke for Klopp. When he saw him in person that day, Gordon, who has earned a fortune in three decades as a hedge fund manager, was thrilled. It was clear that Jürgen as a football coach was on the same level as a company boss, like a man you would like to trust your company to. Klopp proved him right in 2019. The coach and his team defeated Tottenham Hotspur in the final of the Champions League and won the biggest title in club football. For this achievement, he has been honored as World Coach of the Year 2019 and thus as the most valuable manager football's billion euro business has to offer. Nobody would have expected that I stand here 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 4 years ago probably. In British football, coaches of top clubs are fittingly referred to as managers. In this video, we'll use both terms. You'll later see why not every coach is a manager and which skills turn modern football coaches into managers. Since professional football has become a global business in which the ratings of top clubs reach several billion euros, it has given birth to a new class of top coaches. They plan new stadiums, steal transfers, charm sponsors and investors, think about nutrition, regeneration and youth work, and experiment with new digital tools. Top coaches are now top managers. To increase the value of their clubs, they need all the qualities of a good CEO. Indeed, managers can learn a lot from someone like Klopp. How to motivate people, how to withstand pressure, and increasingly important, how to sell yourself in the best possible way. Ooh, he's on the market. Is he on the market? Now I'm interested. <laughs> sure, Klopp is a successful coach. The small FS4 Mainz, where he took over the coaching job overnight in 2001 after 11 years as a player in the second division, led Klopp into the Bundesliga. With Borussia Dortmund, he became champion twice and won the German Cup. And in 2013, he even led the club to the final of the Champions League. For his investor, however, the focus is not on goals and victories as a coach, but on how he increases the value of his club as a manager. The value of Liverpool has doubled to 2 billion euros and after the season of 2018, the value of the players' squad rose to over 1 billion and thus exceeded the billion euros threshold for the first time. The LFC closed the 2019 financial year with a profit of 46 million euros and unprecedented revenue of almost 600 million. Club's top boss John Henry also demands something countable. Mathematical models, with which he bet on the prices of soybeans and other raw materials, have brought the US American a fortune of over 2 billion euros. His love belongs to baseball. So Henry, who is the main shareholder of the Fenway Sports Group, has been buying into baseball teams for more than 30 years. He owns the famous Boston Red Sox. In Liverpool, club is to repeat what FSG succeeded in doing with the Red Sox. To restructure a traditional but run-down sports company. Since its purchase in 2002, the Red Sox has won the World Series more than just one time. The entry price in Liverpool was probably right. When FSG bought into the club in 2010, the club threatened to choke on its debts. FSG only paid 350 million euros. Liverpool is one of the most emotional brands in world football. The city has kept up with the big clubs from Manchester, Madrid or Munich for decades. The iconic anthem before every game at Anfield is legendary.
Marc Hosicke became Klopp's agent in 2007. When he was still working for the sportswear manufacturer Nike, that coach from Mainz suddenly appeared in his office because he wanted to be equipped by the US brand. Difficult, said Korsike, because with coaches, we don't sell sneakers. But it was immediately clear to me that this guy is a modern leader with an uncanny energy and eloquence, Korsike said. Klopp got some equipment, but Korsike also had him give leadership lectures internally at Nike, a huge success. Shortly afterwards, he founded his agency Project B to exclusively advise coaches. Young stars like Julian Nagelsmann and Florian Kohfeldt are among his clients. Whenever he is in Liverpool, he stays overnight with Klopp. Kosika could sell his most important asset as a speaker to a different global corporation every week. Google, Apple, BMW, they all want Klopp. The club now attracts sponsors by giving their top people access to the manager. The CEO of AXA recently made a pilgrimage to Klopp in Liverpool and proudly posted a photo on Twitter. The insurance company has been a club sponsor since 2019. Klopp's job title is manager. Sounds simple, but means he is in charge of almost everything. Klopp has kept the club focused on himself and at the same time made sure that he doesn't get stuck with details. In Dortmund, he shared the work with the CEO and the sports director. He soon made it clear to his US bosses that he would like to see a similar distribution of roles in Liverpool. They first promoted Michael Edwards to sports director for transfers in 2016. Shortly afterwards, they brought in Peter Moore, ex-top manager of Microsoft and Electronic Arts, to relieve Klopp in business matters. When he started in Melwood, he was quickly disturbed by the great distance between the players and the service staff. So he memorized the names of all 80 employees who take care of the players. He invited them and the players into the dining room and introduced them to his team one by one. All of them had the duty to help each other to achieve the best for the club, he demanded. Klopp put world stars who earn up to 200,000 euros a week and have a market value of 150 million euros on a par with cooks and masseurs. On a wall in the executive suite, Klopp had written, together strong. Klopp once described his philosophy with the sentence, I want the people around me to be happy. And as a manager, that also means having confidence in employees. I believe the greatest strength of strong personalities is to surround yourself with people who are stronger than you in certain areas. Klopp delegates a lot. Back in Mainz, he had co-trainer Peter Kravitz show self-selected videos during the half-time breaks to make players aware of mistakes. Since then, the tactical genius nicknamed The Eye has been at his side. In 2016, he brought fitness guru Andreas Kornmeier to Liverpool as well as nutrition specialist Mona Nemmer. Coincidence or not, he poached both of them from Bayern Munich, who had bought away Dortmund stars Mario Götze and Robert Lewandowski. Additions such as Kornmeier and Nemmer are as important to Klopp as million-dollar transfers. He even described Nemmer's signing as his only world-class transfer. Because he thinks football is more complex, he not only relies on the best feet, but also on the best minds. As drill sergeant, Kornmeier prepares the professionals for the brutal style of play that Klopp demands. Everyone gets his own training plan, depending on what his fitness data reveal. And Nemmer makes sure that the stars also eat the best possible food. When Klopp arrived in Melwood, they still had the traditional English breakfast with sausages. Now Nemmer regularly studies the blood values of each player via app and adjusts the diet. The team means everything to Klopp. That's why he also selects players according to whether they fit in character. To have a complete idiot with you just because he can kick a little bit better is totally annoying, Klopp once told a German newspaper. When he wanted to sign midfielder Jorginho Vinaldum, he invited him to his home to get to know him first. The Dutchman was flabbergasted when the future boss wanted to chat about his last holiday instead of football. A dozen nationalities play together at Liverpool. Egyptians, Brazilians, Germans, Spaniards. Such heterogeneous teams are also becoming increasingly common at international companies. They can only be led through a shared goal with a high level of intercultural competence, a strong sense of community and a high level of professional authority. Sophisticated tactics require tools that make them easier to learn. Here too, Klopp was ahead of his industry. When he was asked to comment on the games of the national team on German television in 2005, he asked for software that would allow him to analyze scenes directly on the screen. 
with flexible viewing angles and the ability to draw arrows or lines on the TV image. But there was no such thing. So Klopp convinced the broadcaster to develop one. A condition? He could then use it at Mainz, free of charge, of course. The man thinks like an entrepreneur. Klopp leads his team with vision and innovation. He hands over responsibility to those who can do something better than he can and he is aware of his role in the football business. Coaches are also entertainers. Only if the show on the pitch captivates the audience again and again will football remain one of the best paid entertainment industries in the world. Football is theater, says Klopp. If we don't play a great play, there will only be two people left sitting around at the end. Klopp uses his showmanship strategically. He used the first press conference in Liverpool as a kind of government statement. I'm the normal one, maybe if you want this. <laughs> a saucy distinction from star coach José Mourinho, who had branded himself the special one. As an advertising face, Klopp is one of the most sought-after German celebrities. He already advertised rusk, razors, wallpaper paste, cars and beer. He is expected to earn 1 million euros a year with a German investment advisor. The down-to-earth attitude, which gives Klopp credibility among fans, also makes the commercial side of the football business look less unlikable. Of course, the proceeds are always being maximized. Liverpool even has contracts for jeans, coffee and prams. But with an emotion figure like Klopp at the top, it doesn't stand out as much. Klopp has actually exceeded the target set by his employer. After all, the FSG bosses mainly told him to regularly reach the Champions League in order to stabilize revenues. Maybe he will stay in Liverpool until his retirement, win a few more titles and get a bronze statue at the stadium. Like club icon Bill Shankly, who coached the Reds for 15 years and won six titles. Shankly's statue is engraved with the words, he made the people happy. In Klopp's case, you could add, and the investors too. What do you think makes Jürgen Klopp special besides his football and management skills? Let us know in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this other view of Jürgen Klopp. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more videos like this. It's a very erotic voice, by the way. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> wow.